What is up YouTube fragrance family and friends? I'm Tommy with Studio Sense. Welcome to another video review today. If you happen to actually catch my community post yesterday, I got a new fragrance. Actually, I got several new releases in yesterday. I'm excited to show them to you, but today we're gonna be focusing on one in particular. And so when we return, we're gonna take a closer look at Mont Blanc Explorer Ultra Blue. See if it's worth picking up that and more so. Stay tuned. Hey guys, and welcome back. So today we're looking at Mont Blanc Explorer Ultra Blue. I was really excited to get this in and in my hands. I am a huge fan of Mont Blanc Explorer being the Aventus-like fragrance that it is. I happen to think that it stands on its own two feet. It's got a lot of unique characteristics that make it a standalone signature fragrance, even away from its Aventus-like body or DNA. So what can we expect from Mont Blanc Explorer Ultra Blue? Is it going to be like a Blue de Chanel smell alike or similar to Versace Dylan Blue or another popular blue fragrance? We're going to take a closer look at it, the notes, but first of course let's take a close look at that presentation. Mont Blanc Explorer first came out, I was impressed by the presentation. I really liked that classic bottle look. So the fact that they were trying to emulate the lens on the front and also on the bottom of the bottle, which very obviously mimics the lens set of a DSLR camera, I thought that was kind of cool. It was a really neat nod to specifically the idea of travel. That's what the word explorer is all about, exploring the world around us, taking photographs with a cool camera and capturing the moment. And the idea behind the fragrance is capturing the essence of that in the fragrance itself. So the box has almost like that linen-like feel. You've got a couple shades of blue. This is almost purple, but it's, it's a blue and then a dark navy blue in the background and the letters are in silver. And then the Mont Blanc itself with the Mont Blanc emblem is in white. And this of course, has your eau de parfum. So this is an eau de parfum concentration, 100 ml bottle or 3.4 fluid ounces. And then of course all your stickers and codes, and batch code on the bottom of the box. We've seen this presentation before, but instead of the black wraparound, now we have a blue wraparound because that's the focal point of this fragrance is the blue. It's built into the name. So before we actually talk about what it smells like, what about that note breakdown? Mont Blanc Explorer Ultra Blue features top notes of Sicilian bergamot, exotic fruits, and pink pepper, with heart notes of sea notes and ambroxan, resting on a base of Indonesian patchouli leaf, woodsy notes, and leather. So there you have the note breakdown. It's quite a bit different from the OG Explorer. This one has the addition of exotic fruits, which wasn't in the OG Explorer, and also some sea notes or marine notes. So we got some aquatics going on, and it's something that we would expect out of a blue fragrance. So instead of being a spicy incense like a Versace Dylan Blue, this might be going, or at least trying to go in the direction of like a blue de Chanel. So let's go ahead and not wait any further and try out that juice. Just a couple nods on the presentation. I do really like the fact that it, it does show the Mont Blanc emblem on the very top and also on the very bottom. Um, and also when you take the lid off on the atomizer, you also have the Mont Blanc emblem as well, snow-capped mountain. One thing about this release, I've been excited about it, but I haven't allowed myself to think a lot about it and therefore haven't created a ton of expectations as to what it's gonna smell like. I just really wanted to be surprised. So honestly, I'm gonna be surprised at whatever this is, you know, good or bad. I was not expecting that, <laughs> okay. Um, hmm. Interesting. It's a very um, 
You know how when you smell a John Varvatos fragrance that's in the wicker, you know, like the vintage family um, or the artisan family, like artisan pure, how it's known for being floral, herbal, or uh, what's called um, hesperitic. Hesperitic is a phrase used to describe, you know, a fragrance that's kind of floral, herbaceous, and a little bit woodsy, kind of, sort of. That's what this, that's what this is. That is not what I was expecting. It's, um, I, I like the open. It's, it's, it's a, got a little bit of zing from the pink pepper, no doubt, going on. A little bit spicy freshness, but it's a, again, it's airing on the side of herbaceous. I'm gonna have to wait for this to dry down a little bit to give you some more thoughts on it, because right now I'm kind of in shock <laughs> that this, that this doesn't at all feel like a blue fragrance. It's, um, honestly, it actually smells kind of basic. As an open, it's just okay. It's uh, it's it's bright. It's got some bergamot, obviously, in there. Um, it, it's got some exotic fruits, but I literally don't get any fruits in this. If you're gonna say that you have exotic fruits or or fruits at all in your fragrance, they better be in there. They better give you some kind of indication, especially if they're in the top. Honestly, guys. I'm gonna spray this on my skin because that tester strip, either there's something wrong with the tester strip, I got a bad batch, or this is just a really basic fragrance. So, kind of disappointed right now. That open was okay, but I really truly was expecting something drastically different than that. So it's still, uh, I would still use the word hesperitic or floral herbaceous. That's, that's kind of what you get. Uh, you get a little bit of pop from the pink pepper because that's what it's used for to aerate or lift a fragrance, give it some, you know, volume. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit of aquatic now, a little bit of a, a little bit of a salt, a warm aquatic, but mostly uh, ambroxan. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna do something that I don't normally do the first impression. I'm gonna pause video and then we're gonna come back, but I'm gonna wait about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, because I wanna give you guys a better assessment of this fragrance. I don't want to, like this is the first time I think on the history of my channel and you can go back and, and watch all my first impressions, please do, <laughs> and let the ads roll. You know, when the ads come on, don't skip them. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I really do that. Um, but I've never actually been this disappointed by a first impression so far. All right, guys, welcome back. I did literally sit here for 20 minutes just like I am now. I didn't really move that much because <laughs> I literally just was waiting for a change in this fragrance and it's not really changed at all. Primarily what you get in Ultra Blue, which is misnamed, a little bit of pink pepper in the open, you don't get any fruits, you get a little bit of woody herbaceous. So in the dry down, what you're getting is a little bit of aquatic, it's a very little bit of aquatic, and then a little bit of leather, and then mostly ambroxan. So basically what this is, is just a basic ambroxan fragrance. This has a good bit of ambroxan in it, but nothing really to back it up. Ambroxan is like the tuba player to a band. You know, by itself, it sounds like a, a tuba, which I'm not hating on tubas. It needs accompaniment. It, it needs some kind of accompaniment, and there's not a lot of accompaniment in this. I'm extremely disappointed in Mont Blanc. This is a new release for 2021. It was purportedly created by Jordi Fernandez, Antoine Mason Du, and Olivier Pichu the three that were involved in the OG Explorer, I don't see their handiwork. They either took the day off and let somebody ghost create for them, or they were just having a really bad day. Just because I don't really care for it, and I think it's a basic fragrance, and I'm disappointed, doesn't mean I'm not gonna try it out, and it doesn't mean I'm not gonna give a full review on it. So I am gonna continue to wear it just like I do all fragrances, whether love them or hate them. I'm gonna continue wearing it so that I can flesh out really where it's going in terms of performance and in terms of if it changes very much from what it currently is. It's lightly salty, lightly aquatic, but a little bit of leather, mostly in Broxen. So this is a basic summer fragrance. Honestly, that's the best way that I can describe it. It is not, definitely not worth, I paid almost a hundred bucks for this. It's definitely not gonna be worth that. I would highly recommend that if you're interested in picking this up at all, to wait till it hits discounters and is right around the $25, $30 mark. This is one of those fragrances that I can foresee into the future that this is gonna be right around 40, 35 bucks. And I wouldn't pay more than that for it. 
So guys, thanks so much for checking out my unboxing and first impression of Mont Blanc Explorer Ultra Blue. This is gonna be one I would recommend sitting on until it hits discounters. Once it hits discounters and enough people smell it, the price is gonna probably drop drastically on this and you'll be able to pick it up for a good, a good price. I'm not saying it's a worthless fragrance, I'm just saying it's a basic summer scent, not worth your time or your money when there are so many better out there. So again, quite disappointed in Mont Blanc. But I appreciate you stopping by and checking out today's review. All reviews can't be positive, right? That's what reviews are, is to kind of give you an idea of where, of what a fragrance is, where it's coming from, and who might enjoy it and who might not. So there are some out there that might think this is the cat's PJs, and if they do, you know, I'll listen to their opinion of it. You know, maybe, I, again, maybe my opinion will change over time, but I appreciate you stopping by and checking out today's video, and as always, thank you so much for your support on my channel. I'm Tommy with StudioSense, and I'll see you tomorrow.